Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at No Star. In today's session, we will be looking at three ways in which we can perform absurd operation in SQL Server. So let's get started. We are going to be working with the employee sample data for our tutorial today. We have this table. It has some employee IDs and names related to those employees in it. And we are going to write some absurd statements wherein we are either going to insert a new employee if the employee ID does not already exist in the table, or we are going to update the name for the same employee ID which already exists in the table. All the code related to this employee table, how to create it and how to insert this data that we are going to be working with today would be provided in the description box below. So I have run a simple select statement on this employee table and there are some 12 records in the table. The data is very simple. You have the employee ID, name, department ID and salary we are not concerned with in this example. So the first approach is very obvious and very common. The approach simply says that first try and look for the employee ID in the table itself if that employee ID already exists, then run an update statement, else run an insert statement. So let's see how we can check it. So the first step here is to go and look into the table and see if any record for that employee ID already exists in the table. So how this can be done is writing by writing a simple select statement uh, as we're going to see right now. So you just write select one uh, from your table and then in your where statement, you just need to include exists and then run a select statement for that employee ID on the table. So select star from dbo.employee where employee ID equal to let's say one. So now if I'm going to execute this statement, I should be getting one as the output. So this is what I get. If let's say the employee ID uh, does not exist in the table, so we saw that there were 12 records. Let's say we are going to look for the employee ID 100, which does not exist in the table. We are not going to get any output from this statement. So this statement in itself will not be true. So this is a statement that will uh, help us to find out whether the record already exists in the table. So step one is completed here. Now we said the second step is to after checking this, the second step would be to run an update statement or an insert st uh, statement based on the output from this select query that we have just written. So when we are saying that we want to run the statements conditionally, we are hereby implying that we want to use an if then else kind of construct. So to do that, we're just going to include this within an if condition. If and when you're writing the if clause here, you can actually remove the select one part. You can just check directly. So you can write an if exists, whatever is your employee ID. Then, so if this returns an output, that means the uh, record exists which would return a positive output or true output, then we are going to update this table. So simply write the update statement here. Update dbo dot employee uh, set. Let's say we are setting the name column equal to, uh, let's say whatever is the name that we want to set, where employee ID equal to, let's say, 100. Okay, because that is what we are checking here. Now we don't want to hard code the values. So the next step that we're going to do is declare some variables where we can store these values. So I'm going to go above here and declare a variable called employee ID as integer. And I'm going to give it the value of let's say 10. And then I'm going to declare another variable called add name and this would be our vacar and um, okay let me declare it as max for now you can declare it of the same length as you have the column in your table so vacar max equal to let's say brad okay and then we can use these variables and we can change the values in these variables for different transactions that we are going to perform so here now i can just 
include this variable that I just created. Let me do it like this so that it is easier to view. So I can just do an employee ID here and then I can set it to at name and at employee ID. I think I will need to remove this. Let's see. Okay. So this is a then part. So if the conditional statement, the if statement returns a true value, then we are going to update the record in the table because employee ID already exists. Else what we are going to do is we are going to insert the value in the table. So now I'm going to write a simple insert statement. So insert into DBO dot employee uh, values. Okay, so you have to define the columns for which you want to insert the values. So the columns are going to be employee ID and name and the values that we're going to insert are at employee ID and at name. Okay, so these are the values that we're going to insert. Now we have written multiple statements, but there's no way to execute them as a single block. So what we need to do now is put this within the statements begin and end. That would allow us to execute these multiple statements that we have written as a single block, so one after the other. So what I'm going to do now is right here, so I can declare the variables even before this block, um, but let me declare it within the blocks, begin. And then I'm just going to end this whole block here. So because I have an if then else, I cannot just run it as it is. I have to include it and I have to create a block of statements, which I can create by using the begin and end words over here. Now, if you look carefully, you will see that it is suggesting that there's an incorrect syntax near this then that we have written. And it is because we do not need to explicitly write the then here. The syntax in SQL Server is just to write if and then whatever uh, operation you want to perform if the statement is true and then include an else and then just write the operation that you want to do if the condition is not satisfied in the if clause okay so we do not need to write an if then else if and else that would do okay so now we have everything in our block of code that we have defined so we can just execute this block of statement so I'm just going to pull this down so that it is easier uh, for us to see more of the code. Okay, so now we are going to execute this statement. Now what we should be seeing is that the employee ID 10, it already exists. So let's do a select star from employee where employee ID equal to 10. Okay, so we already have a record there and we can see that there's a name associated with this record which is Terry. What we are going to attempting to do here is update this record because the employee ID already exists. So we are going to update the name Terry with Brad. Let's see if we can accomplish this with this piece of code that we have written. Okay, I see another error being implied here which is this and we do not need this closing bracket at all. So we're just going to execute this. Now we're ready to execute it. Let's execute this. So when I execute this, I get a simple statement at the bottom that says one row affected, which means that an operation has been performed on one row. So let's go back and see what has happened if a code has worked. Um, I'm going to run the select statement again and now the name should be Brad. So the update statement has executed because the employee ID already existed. Now let's go and change some values and see if this would still work if the ID does not exist. So I'm going to change this to 15 and I'm going to change here the value to 15 just to make sure that the employee ID 15 does not already exist in the table. So I'm going to check it. There is no record with that 15 employee ID, zero rows. So now I'm going to run this code and see if the insert part also works. Okay, what did we do? Okay. Okay. 
So now again I get a message that one row affected means there has been some operation that has been performed. So now let me go and execute this statement again and see if there has been a record created with employee ID 15 which I can see has been created. The department ID and salary are null because we did not specify any values to be populated in these columns but the record has been inserted. Now since we are performing an upsert operation the chances of concurrent transactions taking place at the same time and you might not get the correct results because an update and insert is happening maybe at the same time for the same record. So what we need to do is we need to have some kind of lock on the table so that until and unless our changes are committed, no other operation can access that record. So for all those things, there are various ways that this can be done and it is important for absurd operations because there are high chances of concurrent operations happening uh, for the same record if we do not exercise these locks. So one, the first thing that we need to do here is that instead of just defining it as begin, we need to define it as a transaction. So what we're going to do is say begin transaction and then at the end we're just going to commit the transaction. Over here. So now let's change some value. Let's change it to 16. Uh, okay over here. And now let's execute this code. Okay, you would see still that the one row has been affected. So now I just execute this statement. And the same thing has happened. A new record has been inserted for employee ID 16 because we didn't change the name. The name is the same as bread. But what has happened is that since we have defined it as a transaction, we now have a feature to include a commit transaction or a rollback transaction. So we are making sure until and unless we're sure that all the operations have completed successfully, we have that opportunity to roll back the transactions. If we are sure that everything has happened fine, no other record or no other process has um, meddled with the record that we're trying to update or insert, then we have to commit the transaction. So this gives us that ability to either roll back in case any error is encountered or commit the transaction only after all the operations in this block have finished. So you have you kind of hold a lock and you perform all the operations and you commit the transactions only then all these operations will be finished. So that's why we need to define it as a transaction. Now other thing that we can do is we can use some hint at various places for example in the select statement maybe we can include the hint so we can write with upd lock and serializable okay and you perform the same operation so let's change it to 17 in this case now okay Okay, one row will be affected. What has happened is with that, with these hints, uh, UPD log is basically update log. So if there is any update that needs to be performed, that record will be logged and no other process will be able to access that record. Serializable is um, the isolation level. It also helps you achieve some kind of lock on the record that you're accessing. I will provide the link in the description box to serializable as well as UPD log and there's another kind of log that we can, uh, will see in the next uh, query that we write. So you can go into those links and discover in more details how uh, actually they help these commands or these hints help you to uh, provide a lock on the record that you are trying to update or insert. So you'll see that with the absurd operation, it is really important to use these hints and use the transactions to perform your update and insert operations. So this is one way in which you can perform the absurd operation. Now, some say that this may have a performance penalty because you are uh, checking the table in twice, you're scanning the table twice because first of all, you are for, in the first uh, instance, you are running a select query on the table to see if the record exists and then you're scanning the table again to update or insert the record accordingly. So there are two scans happening for the table which might have a performance penalty. So we move on to the second approach in which we can perform the absurd operation. So I'm going to copy this code and then we'll make the necessary changes. So I'm just going to copy this 
code over here because the insert and the update operation the statements would remain the same the variables would remain the same and we are going to write all our code within that begin transaction block okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to remove this if exists condition i'm going to just remove it over here okay we are not going to perform this uh, scan at all what we're going to do is we are going to perform an update operation directly now since we are going to perform this update operation there is no select i'm going to include these hints with my update statement so i'm just going to copy and paste them here okay so in this approach, I'm going to straight away try to update the record for that employee ID. Now, if the employee ID already exists, it is going, the statement is going to be successful and one row is going to be affected. If that employee ID does not exist, then nothing is going to happen. Okay, so no rows would be affected. So what we're going to do here is use the row count from SQL Server. So if the row has been affected, which means the update has been successful, one row has been affected, the row count will have a value of one. If no update operation was successful, means the employee ID did not exist, the row count would not have the value of one, and then we can pass it to the insert statement. So that is what we're going to make use of here. So very simply, now I am going to remove this else because we are not using an if condition. So now after the update statement, I am going to write another if condition, and I am just going to check the row count you can see that it is suggesting the row count variable so row count value so update has already been done either it has been successful or not only thing we need to check is if the update has not been successful then execute the insert statement so if it has not been successful the row count will have the value of zero because no rows were affected so we are just going to write that if at row count is equal to zero then insert execute your insert statement Okay, and then we have already committed the transaction. Now this should equally work well. The advantage with this approach is that we are scanning the table only once. We do not need to run this extra exist statement which we had been running in the earlier query. So now again, we are going to change some values. Let's make it 18. And now let's change the name also, maybe to Anita. Okay. Okay. And now execute this okay one row affected so it tells us zero rows affected and then one row affected so it is giving us the first update uh, the um, the result of how many rows were affected from the first update statement and then how many rows were affected by the insert statement so now if i just go and check on this query I have the record inserted. Now let's say we want to update the same record. So let's make it Anita1 and run the same query again. It says one row affected because it did not reach the insert part. It just executed the update part. And now if I just check it through the select query, you will see that the name has been updated to Anita1. All right, so this works very well. This approach works very well. It is more compact code as well and it's easier to, it's, maybe it's more performance friendly as well because then there's a number of queries that we are trying to execute now moving on to the third method the third method uses the merge statement from sql server and with that statement we can check whether we have a matching employee id in the table if we have it then we run the update statement if we do not have the matching employee id in the table we run the insert statement so let's take a look at that method so I've just copied the declare statements from the previous code and now we're going to write a merge statement. So you have to start with the merge statement and then mention the table, the employee table in our case or any table in which you want to insert or update the records. So dbo.employee. Um, again, we can specify some hints to maintain the lock on the table. So in this case, we are saying whole lock. Uh, in the early example, we use the UPD lock. UPD lock is an, uh, a lock for the update statement. The whole lock would be uh, across the statements. So again, a detailed link I would be providing in the description box below. So you can go to that link and find out more information about how these locks actually work. So here for the merge statement, uh, merge dpo.employee, employee, uh, you just have to write it as a target table. So as target, 
using values okay so the values that we're going to use are these variables so your key values which you are going to check in the table and the values that you're going to update in the table so add employee id and add name and there would be a bracket here as source so this becomes our source this is what we are comparing it against and you have to define some names for these so let's define them as let's give them the same name so that it's easier for us to understand as employee id name and then you have to define an on clause like in a join so what are you going to join on so we are going to join on target dot employee id equal to source dot employee id once we have written this merge statement then after that we simply need to write two when clauses so when matched and when not matched so when matched means the employee id already exists in the table what we need to do is we need to we need to perform an update so update and we need to set the name from the employee table so set or you can say target dot name equal to source dot name and when it is not matched then what we need to do then we need to insert so insert and the columns you need to insert the value in employee id name values source dot employee id and source dot name so this is what we need to simply write now let's execute this and see if this works so this value is already there let's make it an eta 2 and see if it works okay so we have missed the then so it has to be when matched then update and when not matched then insert okay so so now we have updated the name and if we execute this query it should work a merge statement must be terminated by a semicolon which we are missing over here okay so this time it should work one row affected okay so this has worked let's just run this query to see if we have got the desired result so if I execute this, the name has been updated. Now let's just go and try to insert a new record. So I'm just creating a new employee ID as 20. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to put the name as maybe Amy. And now let's execute this. One row affected. Let's just check the result for this ID. And now I can see that a new record has been inserted. So this is how we can even write a merge statement and we can, it, it's a more compact way of writing it and we can simply check it. Um, it might be a little confusing in the beginning, but let me just break it down once again, if you have been confused by how we wrote this merge query. So what we have done is simply first started with the merge statement, merge the table name where you want to insert and update the records so that becomes your target table you just need to perform some lock on this table so that no concrete transactions can try to access the same record so we are just performing a lock and we're defining our table as target table so the first part is simple just mention your table name and define it as a target table then we have to define of just write a word called using and then you define your source which means what are the values you're matching against in your target table so in our case these are variables so we are trying to match the values against these key values against these variables that we have defined and then because it kind of becomes your source so we are just saying the, as source and then you need to give some names to that source it they can be any names we just give them employee id and name to make it easier for us to understand then it works like a join so you are joining 
between two tables your two tables are your target and source as you have defined here so you are just saying target dot employee id and source dot employee id which is basically the key value on which we want to compare and then these statements are simple enough when matched then update when not matched then insert okay so this is how the merge statement would work again this is a good way of performing the upsert operations in sql server so these were the three ways in which you can perform upsert operation in sql server i hope that you found this video useful if you did then please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel we'll be posting many more videos soon thanks a lot for watching goodbye